Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy's Promo, and today we're going to talk about eight ways to keep your Samsung phone running smoothly. Now, this could mean maybe your keyboard is starting to lag between all the different clicks of the letters. Maybe your gameplay is getting slower. Maybe going between application to application is also getting slower. You got to remember, this is a mini computer, so you do have to treat it like a computer. So if it's on 24-7, seven days a week, every single day of the month for basically the entire year, obviously, you're going to run into a little bit of lagginess. So I'm going to show you eight different ways that you're able to get this done make it smooth you don't have to do all eight you can maybe just do a few and that's probably gonna be perfect for your lifestyle so the first one we're gonna talk about is one that you don't have to think about that you need to do every single day it's an automation so it's gonna do it for you so you want to go inside of battery and device care now through here, you can actually tap on some of these. You can get rid of some duplicate images, which actually one of those we will be doing later. But for the automation part of it, you wanna to go to the very top with those three dots and you go inside of automation. Now you're gonna see a couple different options here. This is one way that you can you know, save the battery of your phone, even though it may slow it down a little bit at times because it's adaptive. It's either you know turning on or turning off your power saving. Uh, but this one up here is turned on by default. Now this one, I like to have it optimized daily, usually right around five o'clock, just because I know for a fact, or maybe four o'clock, because I know that I am you know, dead asleep. So we're gonna go with 5 a.m. So all it's gonna do is every single day, 5 a.m., it's gonna make sure it closes out of all the applications, get rid of all that you know excess memory that is not needed to make your phone go a little bit quicker and it doesn't have all that stuff you know, in the background. Now this next one is turned off by default and you wanna make sure you turn it on. So this is the auto restart at set times. Now, as you saw on the last screen, 5 a.m. every single day, it's going to get rid of my applications. But at 3 a.m., it's going to restart on Monday and Thursday. So two days a week. Now, if you wanted to, you could do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So this way, what's happening is that this small computer is basically turning off and restarting, going fresh, you know, three days a week. Now, if you don't have this turned on and you just keep your phone on uh, every single day for the entire month and you don't even restart the thing, that is when you will find a lot of issues. So again, this is going to happen at 3 a.m. Uh, on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. You can set up to your schedule. And all that's going to happen is when you wake up on those three days, you will notice that it's going to ask you to put in your pin rather than using your face recognition or fingerprint. Because it restarted, it needs to have that more advanced pin to get into your phone or password if that is how you have it set up. So again, three days a week I think is good. You can get away with two days a week if you wanted to. So originally I had mine Monday for Monday and Thursday, but we can keep it even more fresh, more clean Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Now, next up, we will go back into the screen here and we're going to go inside of storage. Now, inside of storage, what you're going to notice down here is an area that is called duplicate files. So there's only 226 megabytes of that, uh, but this is where you'd be able to get rid of some things uh, that could be duplicate. Now, for example, if I don't want popcorn time, I can actually select both of them and get rid of it. Now, for this wallpaper, I'm going to go through, I'm going to get rid of that download area. For this one, you can get rid of the remaster or camera. So I'm going to go in terms of the remaster. So as you just go through, through some of these images. Uh, a lot of these, again, could be duplicates. You can just go through, delete some. So this way you have less files that is especially duplicated you know, on your device. You can even take a look at the larger files, but I think the duplicate ones are the ones that are more important to really get rid of. And then you can take a look at what is inside your trash. So then this way you'd be able to go inside of your, your photo application click on trash and delete it because there is 23 gigabytes in my trash. Obviously it's in the trash. It doesn't need to get there. Uh, this again is just files holding your phone down. This is able to free up storage. So again, go inside of your, your gallery, hit on that trash option and delete your trash. So if you don't know how to do that last step we mentioned, just hit on your gallery, click on those three little lines on the bottom, tap on trash. And you can see here that there's 1,203 images, uh, 163 videos. So these have been sitting in here for a little while now. You can just go through and you can hit on empty. Now you're just gonna delete the trash. So this way, again, you're freeing up storage on your phone. And that is actually quite a bit uh, that was just sitting in the trash again that we didn't really need to have sit there. Next up is going to be a widget and it's going to be that device care widget. So earlier when you saw, we went inside of the settings, you go inside of your battery and device care. This is where that optimizes now. So you have to go through a few different screens and a few different swipes. But here, all you'd have to do is one swipe 
tap the clean. And then now you're able to see that my memory is able to go down. Uh, so this way, some of those applications and cached things in the background is now gone and it's not in the void anymore. So this is one quick way to get it cleaned up rather than going through all those different uh, steps. Oh, and if you guys are brand new here at the channel, Jimmy is promo. You appreciate these tips, tricks, tutorials, and the latest information on your Samsung Galaxy devices. Make sure you guys hit on that subscribe button as well as the bell for notifications to so get notified for all future videos. Now, when it comes down into gaming, let's say that you don't really have any issues with all of that that we've talked about before, but maybe your gaming, you know, could use a little bit of help. All you have to do is unlock developer options. Now, once you unlock developer options, you're going to scroll all the way down. Uh, you're going to keep on going down and it's kind of almost close to the bottom, but you're going to find this area right here that is called force 4x msaa now all this is going to do is it's going to force a better gameplay when you were playing these games now it will take up a little bit more battery but it is going to keep it more smooth so if your gameplay is still perfectly fine and you want to keep some of your battery life, you can just keep this thing ticked off, uh, which basically this one is off by default. But again, this is talk about everything smoothness. So if you want your game to be more smooth, just turn this one on. Now, next up, since we are still inside of developer options, I do want to show you uh, an area down here that's called uh, background process limit. Now, sometimes a few people went through here and maybe they wanted no background processes or maybe only one or two processes running in the background and that's it and basically every single time that you were to close out and if another one comes in the oldest one is gone away now if you keep it at the standard limit which is actually four uh, then what's going to happen is going to keep your phone more smooth because this way it's keeping some of that cached data of those different applications and honestly it doesn't really take that much cash to keep some of those apps in the background running so this way when you do go back to that application later in the day it could still be sitting there it opens up quicker again aka keeping the phone smooth and you don't have to wait for it to fully restart and since we are in here i'm just gonna you know add this one in there uh, you can actually change your animation scales as well so this is one of the first things i ever do the moment i get my phone i unlock developer options and then i turn my animation scale down to the half now originally it is all at one and all this is doing is it's bringing that animation time cut in half so if you're just going from application to application and you like that little pull in and pull out and applications coming in you can keep it at the 1x if you want to but for me i want to go somewhere quicker so i made it come up in half the time so again you can change your animations transition and animator you can put them down to zero where there's absolutely zero animation but sometimes that may, that may cause issues because sometimes applications have particular features where it needs to have a small animation for it to work. So again, happy medium right here is 0.5x for all three of these. Now that we got out of the developer options, we're going to go into one that is you know very self-explanatory. It's going to be inside of display. And if your phone has the motion smoothness in terms of adaptive, again, this is going to keep things very smooth. And when you take a look at the adaptive over here, uh, you can keep it as standard if you want to. It will also give you a little bit bigger battery life. Um, but in terms, again, smoothness, uh, this right here is the main word right here. Put it over into adaptive. Uh, and then if you wanted to, you can even keep this thing at the full resolution if you want to, WQHD+. Plus. Again, this is not an Apple product. I'm not going to limit myself down up over here. So we got a Samsung. You might as well keep that WQHD+, Plus right up over there uh, and you know make the haters hate. So another one that you might want to take a look at is going to be one that is inside of your quick settings, and it's this processing speed. So you can... You you know, kind of move around, see if you can find it. If you don't see it, hit on that little plus button. Maybe it's hiding up there that you didn't bring it down just yet. But in terms of processing speed, there's a couple different things you can do. So you can have it as optimized or you can move it over into high. So this is going to get faster data processing, helpful in some applications and uh, are, that are running slowly, it uses more battery, but may cause heating. Now this one should tend to cause heating if you want your phone to be on that maximum processing speed. Crazy, 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 whatever you might be doing. Again, it's probably going to get hot it's going to kill the battery but if you are you know happy with your battery life you always have access to wireless charging or regular wall charging uh, maybe there's some things that you were doing you can actually just move it over into high just move it over there for about an hour two hours maybe 30 minutes however long you need it for whatever process you're doing if you need that extra processing speed then you can actually move it right back over into optimized so because it is one of those quick settings buttons it's really quick to get inside of there so right now i'm not doing anything extensive i'm going to keep it over as optimized 
and it actually does do a really good job with all the rest of the settings that I have already shown you. And then the very last one I want to talk about is one that is also self-explanatory, um, but it's one of those things that some people do overlook, and that is power saving. So if you go through your quick settings up over here and you notice that your phone is running quick, uh, power saving, or maybe you see that little icon up there, within the quick second, sometimes you know people mention to me that their phones are running slower. I saw that icon, I literally turned it off, and then their phone was running perfectly fine. Again, uh, if you have this one turned on, you can just turn it off automatically because it's limiting your CPU by 70%. Uh, if you wanted to, you can actually turn that one off and then you can turn this thing on up over here. So now all that's going to happen is that it's going to turn off the always on display and it's going to decrease the brightness by 10%. So again, it's really kind of all up to you. It's really nice that you are able to still turn on power saving by turning off that limit CPU speed to 70%. Uh, but if this is something you want to do because you do want to save power, then you're able to keep it. But again, if this thing is turned on, you see that little icon, then that is why you're going to see your phone go a little bit slower than what it should be. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you in, in today's video. Even though I said eight things, I probably showed you 10 things, but I wanted to cover everything. Uh, one of those most important things is going to, you know, make sure that you have your phone restarting at least once a week. I have mine going two or three times a week just so it's always fresh because my, my laptop, I treat it the same way. It actually gets turned off every single day. So when it turns back on, it is fresh to go. But I hope you guys appreciated this video. If you guys did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Subscribe in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, the more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.